Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm Wataru Ishida. Uh, I'm a, a software engineer at NTT. So uh, this presentation was uh, prepared by myself and uh, Yuki Arikawa. It is about a, a CPO co-packaged uh, switch. Uh, Yuki is uh, one of the uh, key member of uh, NTT's uh, CPO project, but due to the time restriction of this presentation, he won't be uh, presenting today. He's uh, sitting over there, so uh, after the presentation, both of us are welcome to uh, get any uh, question and uh, uh, discuss offline. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this presentation is about CPU switches. However, it's not about the hardware on or uh, pros and cons of uh, CPU switches, but rather we would like to introduce the uh, challenges we have faced as software uh, developers when uh, supporting CPU switches. So first, let me explain what a uh, CPU switch is. Uh, it is a switch that uh, places optical engines, which includes the uh, transceiver functionality around the switch ASIC uh, without using uh, the pluggable modules. Uh, the optical engines are placed inside the switch, so making them uh, non-removable uh, in the field. Uh, therefore, many uh, CPO uh, switches uses an external laser, uh, which is considered the most uh, failure-prone part of the transceiver uh, to make it replaceable, like uh, uh, pluggable transceivers. So uh, in the slide, the left side shows a conventional switch using uh, pluggable modules, while the uh, right side shows the structure of a CPO switch. The motivation behind CPO uh, switch is first the power saving. Uh, since the distance between the uh, transceiver and the switch ASIC uh, can be shortened uh, compared to using pluggable transceivers, so the service mode uh, of the switch ASIC can be made uh, more uh, power efficient. So it is a problem as uh, uh, the, the previous uh, uh, presentation presenter also uh, mentioned. And also the linear drive uh, transceivers can be uh, considered uh, in the CPU switch. The next is the, uh, the future proof uh, architecture. While it is said that uh, switches with uh, 200 gig per lane uh, plug of modules are just about feasible, it is known that it will be much more uh, difficult, uh, challenging at the 400 gig per lane generation. So CPO can help overcome this challenge. And uh, additionally, we are studying the potential for higher reliability uh, compared to switches using uh, pluggable transceivers by uh, including a redundant uh, laser source. So specifically by using optical switches uh, to quickly switch to a redundant laser source uh, when a laser fails, we believe it may reduce the downtime compared to pluggable transceivers. So reliability is, as we all know, especially important for AI workloads. Uh, where all nodes need to uh, operate synchronously, so CPU switches uh, might offer advantage for such workloads. Okay, so while CPU switches have these features, uh, as you may know, they are still in a very early stage and not yet widely accepted in the general market. There are no best practices, practices or uh, industry accepted design yet. So we still have many design options. And uh, in 2023, OIF finalized the specification for 3.2T optical engine. So we can start this as a starting point. And uh, regarding design option, first for optical engines, there are choices like whether to have 32 lanes or 64 lanes, whether to use DR or FR or even bi -di. Another option is whether to place the laser inside the optical engine or outside. If you choose an uh, external laser source, uh, you'll need to decide form factor, uh, whether it's uh, ELSFP, RQSFP DD, or OSFP. Uh, you also need to determine whether to use eight channels or 60 channels laser source and uh, what output power level need to be uh, there based on the platform's uh, level diagram. And it's even possible to mix CPU and pluggable uh, modules. For example, you can mount optical engines on half of the switch ASICs lanes and uh, route uh, electrical lanes on the other half uh, for the pluggable modules. So there are many uh, design options and the software needs to accommodate this flexibility. At NTT, we are also developing CPU switches. As a prototype, we build a switch conforming to our OIF specification. Uh, Yuki has been one of the key members in developing this switch. Uh, the switch features uh, 50T switch ASIC and uh, 16 uh, optical engines. It also has uh, eight uh, external lasers, which, has, which each has uh, eight channel and uh, 20 dBm uh, output power. On the right, you can see the uh, control, bus, control bus architecture of this switch. Optical engines are placed around the uh, switch ASIC and they are connected to the 
uh, CPLD on the motherboard uh, via SPI. Uh, this uh, CPLD is connected to the CPU uh, via PCIe, and uh, our optical engines are controlled by the NOS from the CPU. And also, ELSFP needs to be controlled, and uh, it is uh, connected to the CPU via SQLC. So now let's go over what needs to be uh, considered when supporting this switch uh, with a NOS. The first is uh, SPI support. Uh, traditionally, pluggable modules have been uh, controlled via I2C. In Sonic, the opt kernel module is used in conjunction with uh, Linux uh, standard I2C driver for controlling the EEPROM uh, transceivers. Uh, this will change in CPO. OIF, OIF uh, specification have chosen SPI for controlling optical engines, mainly due to uh, performance issues. Uh, since uh, optical engines have more lanes uh, than uh, pluggable modules, I2C was considered too slow for retrieving a large amount of information, uh, such as uh, performance monitoring. So therefore, OptoE cannot be used for CPO, and uh, a new kernel module for CPLD must be prepared. Uh, since CPLD vary by platform, an abstraction layer is needed in the NOS to uh, hide these uh, uh, differences. So next is uh, CMIS 3D addressing. So recent advanced pluggable transceivers are controlled by a, a management interface called CMIS. OIF specification also requires optical engine to be controlled via CMIS. So CMIS uses a 3D addressing to specify the double EEPROM area of a transceiver, uh, bank, page, and uh, offset. Uh, the bank is needed when uh, handling transceivers with more than uh, eight lanes. Uh, this is because the register map is defined to hold information for our uh, eight lanes per bank. So please look at the table on the right. So this is the register map for uh, page 10H, uh, offset 153. You can see that the adaptive input equalizer enabled TX is uh, just defined for eight lanes. So if you want to support transceivers with more than eight lanes, uh, you need to switch banks. So since uh, optical engine typically have more than 32 lanes, uh, the NOS must switch uh, uh, banks while controlling the optical engine. Uh, however, Sonic and uh, OptoE currently only support a fixed bank zero, so this has not been an issue so far since uh, Sonic has only uh, handled transceivers with uh, eight lanes or fewer, but it will become a problem with CPO. So additionally, uh, OptoE maps uh, page and offset to a linear address space and uh, provide it to the user space, so uh, the Sonic Platform API, uh, shown below, uh, currently only requires a linear address uh, from Optoe to access the double EEPROM. So since the CPO requires 3D addressing, uh, this API will need to be updated too. The next is the issue of uh, coordination between uh, OE and uh, ELSFP. Uh, the ELSFP and the OE are connected internally via optical uh, fibers. And uh, to activate a specific OE, you need to ensure that the connected ELSFP is powered on. Therefore, the NOS must know which channels of the ELSFP are connected to which lanes of the OE. And since uh, co this connection map varies by platform, the NOS needs to handle this information. And moreover, in our prototype, one laser channel is shared among uh, eight lanes of the optical engine. So this means that the turning off one laser channel could make multiple ports disabled, uh, depending on the situation. So for example, consider the DL4 is used for uh, all ports. Uh, each port uses four lanes uh, of the optical engine. Uh, if you set admin down for one port and uh, not simply turn off the laser channel uh, connected to that port, uh, other ports could also go down. So uh, ELSFP control must take port configuration in, into con uh, account. A similar situation arises when uh, uh, activating the OE. In the bottom right, you can see the state transition diagram of the CMIS uh, database state machine, which includes a state called a DPTX turn on. So in this state, uh, CMIS expects a transceiver to output laser light. Uh, in the case of pluggable transceiver, uh, the laser is included internally, so it's easy to control when to output the laser via uh, the firmware of the transceiver. However, when using external laser source with CPU switches, uh, the NOS needs to handle this coordination. So in a sense, the NOS has to take over some part of the uh, transceiver's firmware uh, functionality. Uh, in Sonic, uh, the transceiver D component controls the transceivers. So to support CPU switches in Sonic, uh, transceiver D will need to control both the OEs and the ELSFPs. 
Okay, as we've seen, uh, supporting CPU switches with software requires solving uh, various uh, detailed issues. Additionally, since there are still many design options, an abstraction layer capable of uniformly supporting uh, these options is required. Uh, given this situation, I believe the, uh, it is critical to be able to do various experiments in a virtualized environment to advance Sonic support for CPU switches. Uh, in Sonic Transceiver D will be the main component for supporting uh, CPU switches, but currently it doesn't run in uh, a Sonic uh, virtual environment. So we improved this by enabling Transceiver D uh, with uh, uh, Transceiver emulation. So we plan to discuss this in detail at the uh, Sonic Workshop Part 2 on Friday. So if you're available, uh, please join us. Okay, so this is a final slide. Uh, the development of CPU switches is not just a hardware issue. As we've seen, various software adaptation are also necessary. Additionally, CPU switches come with a variety of design options, so a software architecture that can uniformly manage them is required. Uh, to help CPU switch adaptation, we hope to uh, continue deepening discussion uh, within the OCP and uh, uh, Sonic communities. Yeah, thank you.